Well, we knew the third purge was coming. No surprise there. It's just I have this creepy feeling that I've fallen asleep and woken up in some bizarre world reality that runs contrary to everything I thought I once knew. If you'll take a quick trip down memory lane with me, back in 2003, you know, of the yellow cake uranium fame, the let's go invade Iraq fame, I can remember the Democrats, at least to the surface of the eye, they were somewhat pacifists. I remember a lot of Democrats marching in the streets, you know, with the constitutionalists, isolationalists, the old school conservatives, the libertarians, the Green Party members, all of them pretty much got down together because they didn't want this war. Those who believed in peace. And it was a popular liberal slogan, and although it was misguided, its heart was in the right place, and it was no blood for oil. That was really popular back in the day. And now what do you have? Thanks to eight years of Albamia, the one who won a Nobel Peace Prize for doing absolutely nothing, the one who invaded more African countries than any of his white predecessors. You know, it's crazy. I never thought I would see the day where Democrats would put a 2003 neocon to shame. they become some of the most rabid, raving war hawks. And it's incredible to me, because... Despite the whole Ron Paul debacle that fooled a lot of people, you know, he raised $90 million. What happened to all that money? A lot of those same people now believe a letter of the alphabet is going to save them. That habeas corpus is going to be suspended and they trust a military tribunal to look over their affairs. To uphold their values. To protect their families. Because it's going to drain the swamp. You know, don't ever think the government doesn't listen to you. You know, they sent the, the liberals their savior, and now they sent the, the conservatives theirs. But to me, it's as though both sides are just being reabsorbed back into the state. And where are these, uh, where are all the watchdog groups? Why aren't people protesting? This is a, a, an attack on the freedom of speech. How is it that these bastions of liberal thought, the so-called open-minded side of reality, are proponents to this embargo against conspiratorial suggestions in your feed. What's going on here? How is this even possible? I have to be living in some bizarre world reality. Anyway, to kind of tie it all home and end my rant, how long do you think they're going to tolerate the so-called carnivore message? Any diet information or any um, nutritional information that runs contrary to the state narrative? I think they've pretty much signaled the direction that they're going. So I guess in conclusion, at the risk of sounding like one of those detestable hippies, new age, whatever, age of Aquarius... Let's work with one another. Let's be good to one another and try to get along and communicate and build some sort of, I don't know, movement, if you will. At least an awareness with one another. Don't exclude someone because they have a different philosophical outlook or maybe believe the world is a different shape or, God forbid, a different color than you, different race. Or even worse, a different religion. Let's just grow up. We don't act like that with one another in real life. Or at least, I don't know, maybe you do. But the thing is, all these super egos that develop online, we honestly do not act like that in public. So let's treat each other with dignity and respect and try to build something here. So um, shout out to the carnivore community. Let's keep on, keep it on, and uh, God bless all of you. I really want everyone out there that's hearing the sound of my voice to prosper. More purges are coming. I don't want to be the purveyor of doom. But we have a chance to really build something here. So cheers.